Okay, let's make some parts. So, been a long time coming, but we're finally to the point where we can actually start making some of the components for the golf grip. The first thing that needed to happen was we needed to actually make some prototype parts. And if you see here, I've got a prototype for a butt cap. Uh, this has actually been formed out of uh, uh, MDF. And then here is a prototype of the ferrule. This thing took a long time to actually uh, get in place. And what we're going to do is I've got some mold cavities here. We're going to use this mold compound, put these parts in here, and we're going to actually make molds. Now, as you can see here, these are pretty makeshift um, mold cavities. You know, there's no sense in really spending a whole lot of time and effort trying to make these beautiful. Essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to make something like this. You can see I've done this before. Here's the uh, cavity for the butt cap. This is one of the original ferrules that I have. And the difference in this, the ferrule that I have done previous and this one might be a little bit difficult, but inside of here, whoop, let's even center that up. There's just a little bit of a groove on this one that I've included so that this ferrule can fit over the shaft and then we can tuck some of the leather on the inside. Whereas the other ferrules that I had, they just kind of butted up against the, uh, the leather. And so you had to figure out how to apply some adhesive. And we'll go back through that at some point in time. I'll do a teardown of one of the first prototypes and we should be able to see that. But in this case, you know, we're starting at, you know, how do we actually get parts? How do we make parts since there's nothing that's available out on the market? We're going to take these, going to put them in our mold cavities, mix up our mold material in here, and then pour it in and then let it set. So the first thing that I've done, uh, we're going to use this. And as you can see, this is just a piece of Lexan material. This is some old clay that I just took and made a strip of clay, kind of made a, the old fashioned uh, clay snakes like you used to do in first and second grade with, with clay. Made a circle out of it so that it kind of forms a bit of a dam. Got some glue in here. Um, and then beyond that, uh, just then took some hot glue to seal up the edges. And I'm gonna put this butt cap down on the inside. I have some two side, double sided tape on the bottom because if I don't do that, the part's going to want to float when I begin to pour the molding material in. So what will happen is rather than staying down in the bottom, that part will want to rise to the top and that will cause us uh, problems. I got some glue down in here that I want to just clean up. There, that should be fine. And again, we don't have to really be perfect. The area that we're really concerned with is just the area right around this. And that, that'll yield something that's nice and neat, just like we have here. If you notice, I have the top of the cap pointed to the top, just like I have here, so that when I pour the material in, this is going to be the bottom surface. And then for this ferrule, because this is again is going to be the bottom surface, this would be the top. Oh, take that back around. Uh, this is going to be the top. This will be the bottom. So I've got some double-sided tape down on the inside, and I'm just going to press that down in here. Just like that. And hopefully that, that double-sided tape should be enough to hold these parts in place when I pour the material in. So we're going to mix what we've got here. And it's a gooey blue. And I'll start pouring in my white. And 
we're going to make sure we get a good mix because again we don't want to go through the process and try to hurry and shortchange anything only to find out that we really didn't get a good mix between the two materials so and all we end up with is just runny goo that one not only does it set up but it also ruins the prototype part now you got to go back and get it cleaned up, get, either get your part cleaned up or you gotta go make another part. So we're gonna do the ferrule first. I wanna make sure we get everything around there. Around the inside of the part, the outside of the part. That we get good coverage. Okay, so far. Now I'm going to let that sit for a minute and let some of that bubbling come up. And put some in here for our butt cap. So we're done, we've mixed, we've poured. Um, there's some bubbling that's coming up. This uh, material actually is pretty good about making sure that um, the uh, gases are able to escape. That way we don't have any bubbling inside of our material. It comes out pretty nice and, and uh, homogenous. Um, so these are gonna sit, they're gonna be like this, and uh, we'll come back to them uh, after a day. So uh, when we're ready to pull them out, We'll come back and uh, we'll see what we got. Okay, we're back a day later. Going to take a look and see how our molds came out. All we're going to do is just peel this off. We're just breaking apart the uh, mold material. Pop this out. It should come out pretty easily. It should turn this here so I can see that. There we go. Material should separate from the sides of the wood pretty easily. There we go. Peel it off. And the last edge. All right, we got our piece in here. There's our plastic piece. This is where we got to be a little bit careful. Um, and that we have this center piece right in here, and this is still a little bit gooey in here, and that might be due to the, and I think it is, the adhesive in here. There's probably a little bit of a reaction in there, and it didn't exactly mold, but you can see I popped that out. But I got to be careful with the center piece right here and not to tear that out. So we'll try to push on this. I'm going to take our time and slowly work that out. There. Got it out. So there's our mold. We're gonna pour material in here. I'll probably take a, there's a little bit of overlap some of this material, so I'll probably take an X-Acto and clean off these edges, but for all intents and purposes, we should have a mold that's in the shape of this piece here. And then for the end cap, break off this clay. Perfect. 
our piece even stayed attached to here. We didn't have any problems there. And again, we've got a little bit of material here on the outside where it kind of seeped in, but we'll just take an exacto and we'll clean that up. So there you go, we've got our two molds. So we'll get those cleaned up and then we'll try to cast and uh, make urethane parts out of these.